Welcome to Soft Talk. Today, let's talk about Nepal's Republican era as we mark the 15th anniversary of the declaration of Nepal as a democratic, federal democratic, secular republic. Welcome to the program. 15 years is a long time, even in an ancient country and a young republic. Without beating about the bush, let's get the facts straight. 15 years ago, Nepal underwent a political transformation of Himalayan magnitude. It consigned a unitary system of governance and a monarchy that formed a part of it to history. The erstwhile Hindu state of sorts embraced secularism despite reservations from a large section of the Nepali populace. After the monumental change in polity, it was but natural for the people to expect things to get better. But that hardly happened. New political parties came to power and soon got corrupt. Governments came and went, leaving behind a legacy of corruption scandals, misrule, cronism, and chronic instability. The new order was supposed to build institutions to run the Republican system efficiently and effectively. It ended up instead institutionalizing corruption with major corruption scams like PLA cantonment, Yeti, Omni, White Body, and Britney's refugee scandals. Without giving a hoot about the principles of separation of powers and checks and balances, the executive rode roughshod over the judiciary and imposed its will on the legislature instead of letting it, instead of letting it act as the truly sovereign body reflecting the will of the people. Federalism was supposed to bring the state to the very doorsteps of the people. Instead, what people have gotten are the Singha Darbars of their own. Singha Darbar is the central government secretariat. And what they have got at the provinces and local levels are the replicas of these monoliths, the Simadarbars. These Simadarbars, they are quite hard to keep. They are quite expensive to run. Paradoxically, these monoliths resemble the state of affairs in the princely states of the Europe in Nepal. Like those palaces, the Republican Darbars also impose heavy taxes on their subjects and they are also neck deep in corruption and are instability plagued with frequent changes in provincial governments becoming a new normal indeed the more things change the more they remain the same or do they get worse actually. Such is the state of affairs in the country that not a day passes by without the country bidding farewell to an increasing number of youths heading abroad for different reasons, for jobs, education or for permanent settlement. 
hardly a day passes by without youths driven away by endemic corruption, instability, breakdown of law and order, and a deepening economic crisis returning home dead. The transformation that we talked about at the beginning, the transformation that was supposed to bring cheers to the people has ended up pouring cold water on popular aspirations. By the way, this has happened on several occasions. This has happened after each wave of political transformation in Nepal. New political forces have come to power only to get corrupt to the core and get rejected through popular mandates. Corruption has reached new heights, so has malgovernance, so has instability, and so has the breakdown of law and order. All this has emboldened forces that war against the transformation all along. Things cannot get any worse than this, or can they? Even in a gloomy scenario like this, there's a glimmer of hope. What is that glimmer of hope? I'll talk about it just uh, a bit at the end of this program. I was talking about a glimmer of hope. Now let's follow on with those faint rays of hope in these difficult times in Nepal. What is that glimmer of hope? The police probe into the refugee scam, the Bhutanese refugee scam, has given the government a unique opportunity. What is that opportunity? To dig into mega corruption scandals, to dig into infamous uh, scams of yesteryears, those related to policy corruption in particular, and bring the guilty to justice. This action, it can go a long way in cleansing the governance system. This governance system that is neck deep in corruption. This action and uh, the actions to follow on can go a long way in cleansing this quality rife in corruption through and through. Sima Darbar, that big Darbar that represents the state powers that is the nerve center of this shaky republic. The Simadarbar should exhibit the political will to do this, to, to just probe scandals, policy scandals, policy, policy corruption in particular. It should have the nerve to probe those huge scams if it is indeed serious about protecting and institutionalizing the gains of the political changes that have taken place since the end of the Rana regime in 1950. We have come to the end of this episode. We are trying to promote citizen journalism we aim to be your true voice, but for that, we need your constant support. We need your comments. We need your likes. And we need a huge subscription base to continue with this uh, initiative. So please subscribe to our channel, comment on our presentation, and press that like button. 
wherever it's due. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.